Good morning. Uh, welcome to the MT for Christ 24-7 podcast. We're doing our Bible study with the Sincatis. Good morning. Good morning. What a beautiful morning it is here in Hudson, New mm-hmm. York. It's crisp and clear and clean mm-hmm. and 25 degrees and it's going to go up to 61 today. So yes. just for entertainment, we're going to sit and watch the thermometer go up. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's probably all I'll, I'll do today. <laughs> but, but, yeah, I don't know why it has to be so cold in the morning, I guess, because winter doesn't want to quite leave, you know, 30 degrees. <laughs> According to design, Mark, that's why. Like just you know, flip. I think it's going to flip. I think it's going to flip this week um, okay. where we don't have below freezing in the morning, and that's that's when it's good. Good. Well, I'll, I'll accept that as a prophetic we'll take it. word. Yeah, that's, that's right. In that's the right. meantime, <laughs> Father, thank you for mm. your goodness and your grace and your majesty and your wonder mm. that you uh, display uh, for us and for all mankind with uh, common grace as we stand here in the midst of your creation, uh, part of it, and enjoying it and enjoying your handiwork. And this morning, we're going to enjoy your word, Mm. Lord God, as we submit to it and uh, uh, invite you into our hearts to bring change and repentance and newness of life, abundant life, Lord God, as we come alongside and flow with your ways and your mission for both our lives and all mankind. We praise you and thank you uh, for uh, drawing us out of the miry pit, Mm. revealing yourself to us, Lord, and setting our feet on a rock. Thank you for the day that is set before us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So today's study is a controversial, I think is a a, a little um, kind of one of those... uh, slap of cold water in the face kind of studies. Uh, I hope, I'm glad we don't put our address out on, <laughs> although you can find anybody, right, on the right. internet yeah. nowadays. Yeah, they know where I don't want to get any hate mail yeah. or uh, anything like that, but the, the title of today's study is Sentimental Christianity. Please don't feel sorry for Jesus is the subtitle. <laughs> I just love, I just love, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Go get him. Go get him. Sick him. Sick Go get him. And so this was um, instigated through a series of musings. Instigated, indeed. I like like that. (laughs) It sounds like it was provoked. (laughs) It it was. It was. I don't. Sometimes uh, talk about revelation. I don't know how this stuff comes to me. I'm just glad it does. But it just does, and I'm grateful for it too. Mm. Uh, Mostly uh, stirred by. Um, a teaching that I heard on uh, what what's his name Truth Truth for Life with Alistair Begg mm. uh, in, in the middle of the week I actually cite that at the bottom of the of the page mm. if you look at the at, at the teaching where you can find that uh, so that that started up I was very convicted by it I was very convicted by this notion of uh, because it's a it, we're going to unpack this more and more but it's mm. a very human tendency to look at anybody who's suffering and mm. feel a, a just kind of um, uh, oh gee uh, that's horrible uh, sensation and and that's not the place that the, the cross drives us to mm. and we're going to see why and how this um, dovetails in really on the tail end of our previous studies because mm. in, in last week's study Mind the Gap we mm. considered the gap between revealed things and mystery in accordance with Deuteronomy 29 29 which says the revealed things belong uh or the 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 the, uh the the concealed things Mm -hmm. yeah please go ahead sweetheart Mm -hmm. the secret things belong to the Lord our God but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. There you go. Exactly, that we may do all the words of he this did, law. And I, I love the end there. You know, he didn't just reveal it so we could know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, God has it. a way of tacking <laughs> things on. Well, I think <laughs> oh, that's good to know. Thanks, God. Uh, I'll just go about my business. No, 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 no. no. I got a gift this week from mm-hmm. the 
Kathy and Rick Cartwright, the Expositors Bible Study Bible, the ladies' edition. No so that means back. I get it and Arthur did not. Ha, ha. I'm not allowed to read it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's not the other true. secret things. But anyway, it was interesting because I was reading the, the little expository about that verse, and it says, mm. This verse is very misunderstood. It does not mean that secret things only belong to God and he only reveals them to people that he wants to. It does not mean that God's purposes are secret or only revealed and belong to Israel. Mm -hmm. So, there is no excuse for Israel. There is no excuse for modern day believers Mm -hmm. as they had the law before them Mm -hmm. and we had the word of God as Mm -hmm. well before us. There you go. Amen. So that goes with what you were saying about the do. You got to do do them. And oh, by the way, do them. Yeah. You have no excuse. You should Mm. cite that. Have Um, no excuse. So what's the who's the? Oh, that's uh, Jimmy Swagger. Jimmy Swagger. This is a Jimmy Swagger commentary. So, Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that's yeah. Even in our uh, government, in our constitutional republic, everybody, constitutional republic, right here. <laughs> it's not a democracy. It's Sorry, a, I everyone. Love democracy. Even in our constitutional republic, which was based on biblical themes and mm. and principles, mm. um, you are there, uh, ignorance is no excuse of the law. You know, we can't run around and say, "Gee, I." I didn't, I didn't know, that. know that red meant stop and the and the lights. Mm-hmm. That, nobody mm-hmm. ever told me. Mm-hmm. That doesn't. It just mm-hmm. doesn't cut it. Mm-hmm. Stand before the judge and he'll say, "Well, now you know." And just to help you remember, there's a hundred and fifty dollar <laughs> fine. That's okay, right. you know. So that's uh, and this is based on biblical principles that uh, it's revealed. Uh, God mm-hmm. has revealed himself in, in, in general revelation. Mm-hmm. We know the psalmist says that the, that the uh, glory uh, the, uh, or the uh, firmament declares the glory of, mm-hmm. of God. Mm-hmm. And so um, we must look up and take notice and nobody is with, out with, with, or, or with excuse mm-hmm. before God. Mm-hmm. Um, I suggested last week that uh, there are only three possible uh, religious options. <clears throat> There's atheism, where in which there is is no God, which we talked about is is really not even sustainable. But you're mm. welcome to embrace it if you want to be r- ridiculous, right. because uh, the Bible says that the fool <laughs> says mm. that there is no God. Right. If you want to wear that, um, you have the personal choice and the freedom mm. to do that. Uh, God has given you that. Um, then there's false religion, which is an inaccurate expression of who God is, and we talked about how even lots of flavors for that. Lots, lots <laughs> of flavors. That's the truth, man. It's it's uh, and and growing and getting uh, you know mm-hmm. getting more. Yeah. It's amazing how many combinations we can put mm-hmm. on this. Mm-hmm. Um, and nobody likes to be uh, misrepresented, even in the natural. You and I and around the table, uh, people mm-hmm. listening. Nobody likes to be misrepresented. Um, in any way, shape, or form. But then finally, there's orthodoxy, or there's an accurate expression of who God is, uh, and it comes by divine revelation. It, 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 and it's not of our own natural concoction or thinking. Uh, God reveals himself so that there's no mistake about it. And uh, um, so we also touched on the notion that even within orthodoxy, so I'm just going to go out and say, I'm just going to step out and say within Christianity. Right. Because, yeah, you know. People get scared of orthodoxy. You hear orthodoxy yeah. and it's like, uh-oh, I'm right. going to be, uh, you know, uh, like wearing some <laughs> throwback uh, hey, we've been uh, there, orthodox done that. <laughs> uniform or, or something. Um, and, and, yeah, that's a... That's a, a scary term. I think uh, Dr. Or, Dr. Just, Romano defined it as like... Um, Standard or the right traditional way, straight the straight, way the right, straight way or the right way the right way of believing yes. our faith you know the the core truths of Christianity are orthodox yeah you know, so uh, Doctor Romano used to invoke and, and like the term you probably remember this uh, orthopraxy right you know act, not just that's right again not just knowing the right, truth which right, is, has right. value but. But not unless we walk it out. Uh, practice. Right. Unless practice, we practice right, the truth. Right beliefs, right practice. Yeah. And, and um, it, so this accurate expression of who God is, I said, comes by divine revelation. It comes from him. He's the only one that can give a, a genuine and accurate 
um, uh, expression of, of who he is. And so we touched on the notion that within orthodoxy, there are, there most likely are inaccuracies. Uh, please don't send hate mail on this uh. one. <laughs> I'm sorry, because nobody thinks that they're in the church. It doesn't look good on the church sign to say Church of the Inaccuracies, okay? Right. You know, so, right. uh, but because everybody thinks that they're in the, in the perfectly right way, um, because of the law of non-contradiction, two opposing opinions cannot be uh, purported as true. So we can't have, you have to be baptized or you don't have to be baptized. We can't hold those in the same, mm. you know, it's either one or the other. Now, you're not right. going to lose your salvation because you, because you picked the wrong one. Let me just be clear about that. So okay? Some people would say you would. But some people would say <laughs> so, that you would. And yeah. we love those people. We really right. do. They accomplish great things for Christ. They feed the poor. They, right. they and, clothe and they go into the prison. But these, there are things that are not, we're not going to um, uh, hang, you know, uh, risk our, our, our necks over. And some of those people did risk, risk their necks. Back in the 16th and 17th century, uh, yeah. people would risk their necks uh, and their lives over um, the doctrinal positions that we uh, take as uh, considered rather nondescript and, mm-hmm. and rather non-controversial um, uh, uh, nowadays. But... Um, the the principle here is that the Holy Spirit is not confused about anything. No. Okay, it, 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 and and it is pretty uh, perplexing how uh, believing Christians who spend a lot of time in prayer and are are, are faithful and are uh, pious and are really seeking God come up with some of this stuff that is very contrary to other believing Christians who are very pious, spend a lot of time in prayer, and, um, and uh, are, are, are really genuinely seeking God. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, that, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to relegate that to mystery, okay? Right. And I'm going to say that he who is the judge uh, of all the earth, shall not he who is the judge of all things do what is do right? Do what is right. Do what is right. right. That's, I'm going to relegate it to that. To otherwise, God. we will be, otherwise we'll turn very angry yeah. and very, um, you know, we'll dig in our heels and we'll be extremely dogmatic to the point of being annoying. <laughs> and nobody ever annoyed anybody into the kingdom of God. Right. I just want to say that. At least I never did. Yeah, I, I, let I, me tell you, I've tried. <laughs> I, I didn't get annoyed into the kingdom. It was I have a divine tried. revelation for sure. Yeah. I have tried. And, and um, tr- genuinely, truly... You can't truly, tell me what to do, Arthur. <laughs> you know, that's, that was it. Truly no the matter effect. how annoying you may be. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I believe that's what your daughter is right. saying to you. That's oh, oh yeah, oh, heavy conviction right here. But hopefully, you know, the the light bulb we'll will go on in their head, 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 and it's love people into yeah, the kingdom. Susanna of God. Susanna really touched on it. Love them because right. Christ said, "Love your enemies." So not even just those people who mildly disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love them too. Right. Exactly. So it's all about it's all about God says that no man comes to him unless he woos them. Right. And he has to open up their eyes. We right. can't like pry their eyes open. And, yeah. But we can pray. That's yes. right. And we can love. Yeah, I was reading uh, First Corinthians three this morning, and there's a bunch, a lot of stuff in there. But you know, one man water, one one man plants, another yes. one waters, and God brings the increase. And God brings right. the increase. And so, mm-hmm. and and I've heard it said, uh, you know, that it takes like. People have to be exposed to the gospel like 13 times on average before they come to Christ or mm. something. I'm not sure where the stats came from on that, yeah. but, but I've heard that before. Well, I think that you have to be careful of those kind of things because, you know, one of the things that um, in my raising, I was raised Southern Baptist. We, mm. I was raised by a military father, so we moved 21 times, and I've lived in 12 different states. So I've, I've, I've experienced lots of different churches, mm-hmm. especially in the Southern Baptist or the Baptist uh, tradition. and. Of course, salvation is very big, and I'm not negating that. Mm-hmm. But it, when it becomes something where you notch on a belt or you keep a tally in a right. in a little book, well, I brought this person to Christ, or right. I brought this person to Christ, and I brought the, 
Mm. No, you didn't. Right. Yeah, and that's, right. And that's what no, 1 didn't. Corinthians 3 is talking about. Uh, Wearsby's commentary is like, you know, we didn't do it. God did it. Mm -hmm. you know? So, you, so to put true. your, you know, at the problem in the Corinthian church was that they were going, oh, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Paul, I'm of Peter, uh, because they were identifying themselves with the, the teacher and mm -hmm. not the God who brought them to the faith. Exactly. And, you know, sure. that's, that's an error. And I think that that's where Arthur talks about the sentimental Christianity. Right. We, we get that sentimental, oh, good for you. You brought somebody to Christ. Let's yeah. all stand up and praise, you know. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Praise who? Right. Oh, glory, praise glory Arthur is. because he brought somebody to Christ or, quote, unquote, or praise God because that's God it. brought somebody to that's Christ. It. All the glory Indeed. to God. <clears throat> Indeed. All mm -hmm. the glory to God. And how I did agree. he do it? He did it through the suffering of Christ. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, the, these these are all very foundational truths, and and the again, I want to emphasize is that it's the natural man that is prone to you know, think that we've done something or or we've accomplished something, or, uh, and um, and and we're a work in progress. That natural man, you know, he's uh, he's been crucified with Christ, but he keeps resurrecting. You know, <laughs> yeah. keeps coming up out of the baptismal waters, gasping for air. One more breath. Uh, and another uh, thing. Oh, no, hey, just, <laughs> just shut up. Just shut up. Oh, put it back true. down, Pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody said, dead. you know, I, I'd have to keep you underwater a lot longer for, all, right. for you to be, you know. So, um, dead. so one, uh, get back to our title here, one very heinous version of the Christian faith uh, is what I call sentimental Christianity. And it's the notion that we should feel sorry for Jesus because of his abject suffering. Mm. And, um, mm. and so, once again, this sounds on the surface very sentimental. It's very right, very pious, the right thing to do, very orthodox. This sounds like... Because you would... Uh, uh, feelings of sorrow is a natural reaction towards suffering. You know, I, I see the dog suffer, and I'm, oh, gee, honey, get the poor dog, you know, mm. get, him, get him a drink, get him a Band-Aid, whatever it takes. We, we respond and we react after compa in compassion towards suffering, but it stems from a, a sense of piety. And the root word of piety, or, or, the, or pity, it, se it stems from a sense of pity, but the root word, of, or the root of pity is piety, which mm. distinguishes one as, a, as above another um, you know, so <clears throat> uh, really I, I, at the core of our sorrow for Jesus is a sense that you know oh poor Jesus if I were there I would have I could I would have uh, you know he never would have gone suffered and gone to the cross I would have just stepped up to the plate and slapped those Romans around and told them what for explained the whole thing to the Sanhedrin I would have taken care of it Poor Jesus, uh, you know, I, yeah. I just, uh, I, uh, poor guy. In my, in my a... more ignorant times, <laughs> I, I, uh, this, is last, I, this isn't last week, is I, it? I, I was like, if I had a time machine, I'd go back and uh, with a machine gun and I would rescue Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I would do that. Uh, preventing this is the redemption of all mankind. <laughs> you, know, you know, like, oops. <laughs> yeah, but, oops is But right. yeah, you know, yeah. You know, there, there's, you know, there's a song that, that uh, one of the contemporary Christian songs that says, would you take the nails for this man? You know, would you take the place of this man? Mm -hmm. You know, and like you said. A nice sentiment, but. Nice sentiment, right. but. <laughs> The bigger Maybe question you, is, can you? And the answer is no, like, because you're not. You would not dismantle everything God sin. wanted to do. Right. <laughs> you'd be working for the Antichrist, even though, or, you know, you'd be Antichrist against against God's plan. And I do understand the concept of, 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 un, of giving to the non-Christian, and even to the Christian, a remembrance, like we're coming up on the Easter. Right. Um, celebration, the, the, what we call Resurrection Sunday, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to walk that road to the cross. Yes. And we're going to get sad. And we're going to get sentimental. And we're going to say, oh, isn't that horrible? And we're going to say, oh, do you remember the Mel Gibson movie and how it portrayed it yes. so graphically mm -hmm. and so really that some people like me can't even watch it mm -hmm. because it's just so graphic and it's so real yeah. and so horrible. And, you know, that's where I think you can get to the, oh, poor Jesus, he had to suffer all of that. Yeah, he did, but he did mm -hmm. it willingly. 
Indeed. And he did it for a purpose. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Uh, no, I th- I feel that, you know, that uh, the Passion of the Christ is, is, like you said, very graphic. And I feel that certain strains of Christianity, you know, um, put that forth and put forth the, 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 the crucifixion of Christ above the resurrection of Christ. Mm, right. And so they watch that and it's, it's not just like, wow, he did that for me. It's like, I feel bad because he, he had to do that because, yes. of, because of me. Right. And, yeah, that's where and, we and, with and this, then there's yeah. all this condemnation that right. comes mm-hmm. down on us. Mm-hmm. I'm a lowly sinner and this, oh my God, look how bad. I mean, in that, boy, yeah, that movie is like. I'm going to say, I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm sorry, right, Jesus. Because you know? like, look at that movie. He had to suffer all of this because of me. Right. And while that's true. You know, we have to, you know, I sometimes think that, you know, like I said, particular strains of Christianity uh, focus on the guilt mm-hmm. and focus on uh, uh, of, uh, identifying you as a sinner and not a saint. And they they have, you know, uh, Christ on the cross. And I, I really feel like, like the resurrection is sort of like, is recognized but it's like christ died and then he he just died yeah he came back for a little bit but he he basically went to heaven so he's in there and now we have to pray to other uh, other people to help us because we, you know we feel really bad that christ died so we better go to somebody else and and ask them to pray for us so because he's obviously not going to be happy with me because he he had to suffer all that because of me you know and it's just uh it's like they didn't embrace their salvation. They have no assurance of their salvation, even though they're in the church. Yeah. And he asks them if they're going to heaven, and the, and the response is, I hope so. Yeah. I hope mm. so. That's, a, that, that, yeah. that's, that's yeah. the, the most yeah. crushing and sad response you can ever I, hear. I will say that um, it's it's widely known. Um, self-pity is, is probably one of the highest and most deceptive forms of uh, pride. Mm. And, uh, right. and God resists the and crowd. Right, instead of about uh, him, it's all about me. I- exactly, yes. So this is the thing, this is one of the places where that sentimental Christianity leads us. It's very deceptive, and this, this is why we want to um, unveil what's, mm. what, what's at, um, at the core of all, of all this. Although it seems very righteous, you're so, so accurate. And, and um, not to take away from uh, uh, certainly not in any way, shape, or form trying to diminish the sufferings of Christ right. or reduce the cross to just something that we shouldn't pay any attention to. Uh, Jesus instructs us to remember his broken body. He doesn't, mm. he, he, he's not, he doesn't say, he's not, he doesn't uh, uh, weed out, of course, it was, it was too early, they wouldn't have understood anyway. He doesn't filter out the resurrection and say, remember that. Um, I suppose we could take it today as if saying, uh, remember the entire, Jesus is, you know, compelling us to remember the entire um, uh, passion. And that's, um, yeah. uh, but um, he specifically uh, says, you know, this is my, this is my body, which is broken for you. This mm. is my blood, which mm-hmm. is poured out for you as a new covenant. He says these things and he says, remember this. So, um, you know, we're far more compelled to remember uh, the, you know, the the stark, the the the, the um, scary or the right. um, uh, uh, grotesque or any of those things. There's definitely a place for that. You yeah. know, this Lenten Lenten journey mm-hmm. is to to acknowledge, you know, what what happens. Right. To remember, you know, uh, next week Palm Sunday, and then and then of course, you know, we get to remember the cross. It's it's yes. uh, Good Friday. Yeah. And uh, but the good thing is, a couple days later, we get to rejoice. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah. You know, we must never lose sense of that uh, rejoicing mm. uh, there's nothing poor about Jesus okay that, that's something we just want to take off the table all right mm. there's words and expressions and sentiments that shouldn't be even used in the same sentence there's nothing poor about Jesus he's the creator of the universe he, you know he is mm. he is 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 God eternal uh, co-heir of all things and and um, uh, in perfect harmony with the Godhead in the Trinity. And I forget the uh, verse, but, uh, you know, uh, the, the particular reference, but, you know, 
Christ went to the cross for the glory set before him. Well, we're talking, mm-hmm. we have mm-hmm. it right here. This is the oh. first one. This is the, <laughs> there you this go. Is the I did not one. look ahead. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. So uh, we always want to undergird what we're teaching. This is not just the conceptual stuff. This is not just something that some bright idea that I uh, woke up way. with because of the pepperoni pizza or anything like <laughs> that. It, we, want, we want to undergird everything that we we say and, and do and and, and want to submit to ERA. You know, mm. if, if anybody does want to email and say, say, hey, you know, you're really off base on this, and this is why. Mm. Like Luther said, show me in Scripture. Show, mm. I will recant if you show me in Scripture. Mm-hmm. Uh, but here we have in Scripture, uh, Hebrews uh, uh, 12, 2, right. for the joy that was set the before joy. him, he endured the cross, despising its shame. For the joy... That was set before him. He, this Jesus didn't. They didn't catch him, you know. At, at uh, finally, oh, you know, mm. we finally got this guy. He mm. embarked on on a pilgrimage to the cross. This was his mission um, mm. to face the cross, uh, despising its its shame. But it was for the joy that was set before him. And I I don't know if you remember um, year, a few years ago. Um, we we did a study down here mm. talking about who, uh, or at least it came up in one of the studies, talking about who crucified Jesus. And of course, the the mm. the in this season of uh, the great of Lent who done it. and the great who done, <laughs> who done it uh, in this mm. season, it often becomes contemplated. And so somebody will say, some historian will say, well, the Romans crucified Jesus because the Jews had no authority to, mm-hmm. to put anybody to death, and that's accurate. And then somebody will say, well, the Jews crucified Jesus because they you know they, they were the ones that stirred the crowd, and right. they were and the they ones that brought it. him. Yep. And the charge against him, at least in the Jewish, uh, was blasphemy, mm-hmm. which was um, uh, deserving of, death. of death. Um, the most uh, so, right. yeah. And that's one of the proofs that, you know, Christ is God. Uh, exactly. Is, you know, because, <laughs> you know, a lot of people, you know, know he's, he's, the, legal he's, he's the son of God, but he's not God the son. Um, and But but the, the reason he was crucified yeah. is because he said he was God. Exactly. You know, he's one and, of the same. And here's the other thing, you know, you say in, in the season of, of Lent and of coming up on resurrection, but also in the season of, of this where we are in the world in America, Mm -hmm. this kind of question comes up. I mean, you have the situation during, you know, Nazism, where one of Hitler's ruses for getting rid of the Jews was they killed the the Christ. Right, the Christ killer. They killed the Christ, the Christ killer. So they used it as blame. Mm -hmm. And there's always this this want to blame somebody, Mm -hmm. like you said, the great whodunit. Mm-hmm. And again, that goes back to the piety issue, or the the oh, you know, I'm better than you. Right. I wouldn't have done. I it. wouldn't have done it. Sure. I would have gone back in time right. and taken my, you know, my Tommy gun and taken care of everybody, and right. <laughs> and I would have told him what for and everything. All I can say to that is, well, talk to Peter when you get to heaven and see how that went for him. Mm-hmm. Exactly, that's good. Uh, <clears throat> but you know, we we have to be careful that when you're when you're looking at these things and you and you say, well, well who crucified Christ? Well, some very negative people have used that question to hurt right. other right. people, Cause great pain right, and suffer, and, right. and, and raise themselves up, and fall in false pretenses. Yeah. So. And it, it, very, some mm-hmm. very sentimental Christians will uh, step up to the plate and say, uh, and again, this sounds like a a very pious notion. Well, I crucified Christ because it was my sin. The right. nailed him to the right. cross. Right. And, going and again, back to self pity. Right. Going back to self pity. But the theologically, I did it. Accurate. <laughs> I confess, <laughs> I'm the one who did it. Miss uh-huh. Scarlet in the can- you in the are a murderer, as Charlie Chan used to say. But yeah, oh the my. theologically accurate oh answer to the question: Who mm. crucified Jesus? Is God? God yeah. the Father? It yeah. pleased the Father to bruise him. Mm. That's what the scripture says. It pleased the Father. And it's mm. so offensive to those who don't believe. Right, because know, the cross is the, an offense. And, 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 because, uh, because it's the, the abusive father. How could you sure. do this to your own son? Sure. You know, right. Sure. It's a greater uh, 
a greater cause. Sometimes, a greater cause. Sometimes we, we mm -hmm. cause our children to go through things that they consider suffering, but right. for a greater end. Yeah, and, that's good, Mark. You You're know. right. That There's true love right there. Right. No, we don't just make in everything fact, cushy and just right. In fact, on Thursday night's teaching, I was teaching about, um, you know, God, God gave us all a purpose, and he wouldn't give you a purpose that you can't perform. And, and I said, likewise, a parent wouldn't give their child something they couldn't perform. One of the participants was like, oh, yeah, well, sure we would. And I'm like, I'm like wait, <laughs> we would? And I'm like, no, no. And he's like, well, they, they wouldn't think they could do it. I'm like, well, that's a different thing. We know they could, but they might yeah. consider it impossible in their immaturity or whatever. Right. But we'd encourage them and give them the resources to do it. And he agreed eventually. Indeed. <laughs> but, but, yeah, to get that understanding is that, uh, uh, that we, you know, out of love would maybe have somebody do something they wouldn't want to do, like mow the lawn yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yes. well, nobody's saying... Here's a scalpel, son, and here's your grandmother. Please perform, you know, right. open heart I, surgery. Yes. Uh, right, um, exactly. Without uh, medical school. Mm -hmm. or, uh, yeah. Jesus embraced the cross for our sake, for, or for the sake of love, an emotion that uh, uh, no one should feel sorry for. You know, we shouldn't feel sorry for, for loving someone, uh, loving someone into the kingdom, loving someone enough to, uh, to scold them, you mm. know, to... To uh, chasten or reprimand, uh, going back to the to the um, you know the father child or the parent child analogy, um, you know we don't. I mean sometimes again in or sentimental, oh, this is going to hurt you more than or me more than it's going to hurt you kind mm -hmm. of thing. Or I'm really sorry, son, but I'm, I I really got to you know tan your hide this morning <laughs> right. but uh, yeah. uh i'm not sorry i'm not sorry this is going to you'll thank me for this one day and or maybe you won't but you know mm -hmm. what it it's gonna it's gonna have a it's gonna leave a, a mark and um hopefully you know, uh, and, and again we in our natural uh, fallen state we don't always meet that out perfectly. Right. Sometimes we're abusive in our, in our, right. uh, in our, uh, yeah, yeah, in our government, you know, it doesn't right. always work. And so, and you know, the, uh, sometimes out of our, you know, um, like Susanna was saying, sometimes out of our love for God, we'll lose all sense and, you know, mm -hmm. start to, you know, hate people. Um, it's yeah. not what yeah. Christ wanted us to do. Not at all. Not you know? at all. And, I'm very and, tempted and, towards and that. In unfortunately, these times. in my immaturity and my ignorance from the past, I can I unfortunately have said some things that were you know offhand or you know out of out of uh, bitterness that that you know I, I you know now now repent of. Um, nothing I published or anything like that, <laughs> but you know, especially when you're trying to be a witness for, yeah, for God, yeah. yep. and you know something comes up and they ask you about it and you respond out of your own ignorance and then you just sort of destroyed it because you said something hateful, mm, mm -hmm, you know, right. like like placing the you know the blame for the crucifixion on the Jews and it's like yeah, whoops, and, right. and but. They are the Lord's people, and He's got a plan for them too. And and uh, you know we're supposed to. It's, but that's it. You know we're that's our thing. We make mistakes, and we need to grow and learn. And sure. that's why we can never just feel content with just you know knowing what we knew when the day we were saved. Sure, uh, you mm -hmm. know, indeed. There's a there's a book of His wisdom, and and you know and and unpacking it and getting more revelations from the, from the Holy Spirit through the study of the word that right. that we can grow and plus walking it out trying Amen. to live yeah. trying to live it because <laughs> then you, the then you discover yeah. oops uh, I'm not really you know uh, you know if you're pressing one thing too hard um, you know your emotions will tell you you know if you're getting angry uh, mm -hmm. uh -oh. right uh, that. that's the litmus test you know if uh, or a litmus test um, uh, I, I, we, I think we must remain pliable right. in, in our in, in our um, search uh, for for knowing for knowing Christ. Um, again, it, this really keeps folding back on the notion that one, if if we think we've gotten to the place where we know it all, that's a very dangerous place. Whenever I, whenever, and I never made like some long, lengthy argument over my stupidity. It was usually just some, some blatant like one-liner. You, uh -huh. know? <laughs> you know, 
So, so obviously it wasn't supported huh. by wisdom. You know, oh, the Jews, the Jews killed Christ. You know, that would be it, or you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's it's funny when you don't have any anything to really back up your argument. You might press it even more by just saying the same thing over and over and over again. Yes, and I find that mm-hmm. um, in engagement with um, uh, non-believers, primarily, and sometimes and sometimes they do and, the same and, thing to you, <laughs> and sometimes they do the same to me, and then you realize uh-huh. they're standing on nothing. Yeah. You know, their mm-hmm. their arguments are groundless. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and it's Sometimes all with with all very exactly. very That's dogmatic uh, mm-hmm. believers, uh, it can get it can sometimes get hot. I, I I try to back off from those engagements, but I'm you know I'm, I'm remembering an, an engagement with uh, uh, a uh, professed atheist, mm-hmm. and um, as I gently tried to bring some conceptual ideas about. Non contradiction, or mm-hmm. uh, or just some some simple uh, principles. He became became very agitated, very angry, v- dug in his heels, kept saying the same thing over and over again, mm-hmm. and that's a sign that uh, you're not making any. You're not you're not penetrating. You're not penetrating somebody's heart, and that's a sign to say. Mm-hmm. I think to say, back off and and let let God have this. You right. know, you've done your part, and um, yes. now it's only God can. Uh, looks upon the heart as much as I, I I like apologetics sometimes you know right it's like those arguments aren't gonna yeah win anybody I agree uh, it's got to be the Holy Spirit that moves our heart indeed mm-hmm. uh, let's look together at, at Matthew 16 21 to 23 yeah uh, a longer little bit we should we should read this mark if you'd read it for him uh, yes, so I appreciate it and this is the section of scripture where Jesus rebukes Peter um, <laughs> Uh, following yes. Peter rebuking Jesus. That. That's another thing. Love it. Don't, whatever you do, <laughs> don't this, this, this. fall into the error of rebuking Jesus. Yeah, this passage uh, comes up a lot yeah. uh, because it, it points to several things. But uh, uh-huh. let me see. 21 through 23. From yes. 16, Matthew 16, 21, 23. Here we go. From the time Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised raised the third day, then Peter took him aside <laughs> and began to rebuke him, saying, at least he took him aside, uh, and rebuke him and say, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he, t- but he turned to and said to Peter, "Get behind me, Satan! You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men." Right. Mm-hmm. That's it. And yeah, that's at least he didn't want to embarrass Jesus <laughs> publicly. You, know, you got this wrong, Jesus. Yeah. No. You, you know, you don't become the, uh, the the pope or the head of the church by uh, emb- embarrassing Jesus publicly like that. And, and that's and yeah. uh, you know the. The spirit of the, you know, right. he says, "Get behind, get behind me, Satan." The spirit, yeah. spirit of the Antichrist is there, sure, um, to influence him. And and specifically, what is that? That's um, you know, that's you know, no, no, no. We're gonna be self sufficient. We're not gonna mm-hmm. you know, lay our lives down. Are you, are you kidding? Right. Like we're gonna we're gonna rule and reign. Yeah. What are you talking about? And we can see on face mm-hmm. value how sentimental Christianity would lend itself to this sort of thing. Like, uh, uh, hey, I'm not, uh, uh, we're going to rule and reign. I'm not going to suffer with Christ. Uh, what's well, that all about? That, that, that's well, not, just that's not too kingdom. perky. <clears throat> and here at face value, this scripture, we can set, we can, we can sympathize or empathize with Peter uh, here. Hey, Jesus, uh, what are you doing? Uh, really, let's let's back off on the on the death and killing thing. Yeah, uh, this is uh, going good. This is going good right now. Well, and we're doing is, good. There, there yeah. it is. You know, they were they were. There was a little bit of um, you know. Hey, let's let's just keep this thing going. You know, right, there was yeah. a time when they said, you know, let's not go down to Jerusalem because you know they are seeking to kill you. So let's let's try something else. <laughs> let's go preach. You know, somewhere else because we're really enjoying. And you and it makes you wonder, you know, how the the disciples. I mean, they're with Jesus; he's healing people, and people are like, "Wow, you you get to sure. eat with him! Wow, yeah. you get to walk with him! Wow, you get to stay with him!" Part of the and entourage. And there's a little bit of that pride mm-hmm. that's going to yep. rise up and say, "Blah blah blah Absolutely. blah blah." Absolutely. So Peter, I'm sure, felt felt that, and then later on, he's going to get spanked pretty badly when he's in the the outer court getting you know denying Christ. Right. 
But, you know, to bring it to modern day, when you were talking about that, it made me think of um, a very horrible situation, the Columbine situation. Mm -hmm. And there was a young woman, the the boys were running around shooting people, and they got to one room and they said, is anybody in here a Christian? Anybody in here believe in God? And she stood up and said, I do, and I pray for you, and I'm sorry for you. And they asked and her they, to renounce Christ. And, and she and they she, she died. Didn't do it, and they they killed her. They killed her. But you know what? The thing that came out of that was there was hundreds of salvations that came out of that. Mm. Right. And um, and the world <clears throat> would look at that <clears throat> as very tragic. A young woman, you know, prime. In Why her would life. she do that? Why, right. Why would she right. waste save everything? your life by denying um, him? Jim Elliot you know? is another great example. And when when Jim Elliot and and the five uh, Nate Saint and were killed in in Ecuador back mm. in the fifties, uh, when that hit the papers, there was such national outcry about the. Uh, uh, I think um, Elizabeth Elliot was pregnant at the time. Mm -hmm. I know Nate Saint had at least one, maybe two children. Um, The Elliots already had children. This was a this was viewed as as a as a catastrophe, but not to Elizabeth Elliot. Uh, Mm -hmm. She went back, continued to evangelize the uh, Mm -hmm. Alka Indian tribe, and uh, and and won many many lives to Christ Mm -hmm. for. Not sentimentalizing the gospel, but seeing what is is really genuinely before us, right. mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. seeing the truth of it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, another uh, excellent scripture that, and this is actually the this was actually the the um, foundational scripture that Alistair Begg was preaching on, Luke twenty three twenty seven to thirty one. Uh, Susanna, will you no, read that for us, please, when you get there? Um, and um, again, this this is re- genuinely depicts and points out to us the, the reality of what's going on here. Yes, go ahead. And there followed him a great company of people and of women who also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourself and for your children. For behold, the days are coming... <clears throat> in which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps that never gave suck. There shall, then they shall be saying to the mountain, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things to a green tree, what shall they be done to a dry? Right. So in the context of what's going on, uh, I think it's a, a little unclear here as... as if uh, He's being Jesus led to the is cross, being right? led to the cross, right. he is not actually uh, on the cross at this time. But there was an entourage following him. We know that there was um, Simon, Simon was carrying the cross, carrying from carrying the, cross the beam for him at mm. one point, and, uh, um, and and so there's much uh, there's much going is on, and, and and there's much weeping and lamenting, and mm. right again, rightfully so. I, I'm not trying to diminish. The very genuine, the very real human emotion of sorrow and 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 and, uh, and grief mm. that is this is this is not uh, a perky moment. This is you know though I think even some I remember and I won't say you know I won't identify the who's or the why's. And, or anything like that, but we attended an, uh, an infant's, not an infant, a young child's funeral mm-hmm. years ago, mm-hmm. and a very young uh, minister was was trying, you know, with a good heart, trying to diminish the sorrow and um, uh, instigate some rejoicing <laughs> mm-hmm. that we should actually be dancing. She said that. <laughs> mm-hmm. at, at this at this funeral, and this was not a pretty funeral. This child, mm. um, it, it was a very ugly situation, and and, and um, you know, and I'm 
I'm not going to the other side of the pendulum here of saying that the entourage should have been rejoicing uh, mm -hmm. on, on with Jesus on the way to the cross. Should yeah. have been skipping and yeah. laughing and saying, no, they, they go should. get him, Jesus. Yeah, way to go. It had Hallelujah. Not yet been revealed. You right. Know, that, uh, yeah. What, yeah. Would, what would come. And, right. You know, the, his words it here. It had not are, yet been revealed. His, right. his words are prophetic here, too. Yeah. You know, and don't weep for me. Weep for, right. for yourself. Because exactly. I, I told you about the temple being torn down and, right. you know, bad days were ahead and it, it took a while but yeah um, mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. so here in the midst of his suffering where again any one of us would have said you know would have embraced sympathy and 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 just you know thrived on uh, a sympathy Jesus is is deflecting sympathy and and uh, bringing forth good theology he's actually teaching mm -hmm. on the way to the cross um, mm -hmm. and he uh, Regarding and, 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 our testimony, I would just like to say, you know, I think you have to know the room and, and such a, you know, yeah. a traumatic loss yes. like that. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. there's ways to give hope without without yeah. going to the extremes of dancing for yes. joy. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I, like you said, it had a, their heart was a good sentiment, but, yeah. but, um, but to, 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 to do that is just. Yeah, it, it wasn't an abject Unwise. criticism of the person or it was just, it everybody was, just was trying to trying, feel through. You know, a, and it's right. hard. Any time, how many right. times do you go to a funeral and you walk up to the grieving family and you're like... Oh, that, that, that. Right, they have nothing to say. Right. And I recall another uh, funeral where a mother had uh, passed. She had been ill for many, many years and... She had two grown sons, and oh, yeah. everybody was yeah, like, "Yay, she's mean. dancing on!" You know, she's regained her. She had lost a leg. She regained her leg. She's dancing on streets of gold. Blah, blah blah blah. And one of the sons went up and said, "I can't be happy. Right. All of this hurts and my heart. I've right. Lost exactly. my I lost my mom." He said, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. And that's so I mean, it's hard. Yes, yeah. it is hard. So you you, you have to understand yeah. the, the, what's going on. But again, like you said, Jesus is teaching, and he's being prophetic. Mm. But he is a mess. Yeah, he's, yeah he's a he's bloody been mess. He's a bloody mess, and how can people not look at that and go, "Oh, and be cry sorrowful. and yeah. sad"? So, so yeah. So, mm -hmm. it's, but you're again, you're not trying to diminish that, and you're not trying to go to the other. You're not swinging the pendulum too far. And that's either why way. you know we can't blame them for being sad. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's a good Friday, and thank God there's you know Resurrection Sunday because then we mm -hmm. can say, "Hey, there's 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 hope. He came back and." And we should really pay attention to those words because he's talking about us suffering. Yeah. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, and, uh, we live in a tension. Now. We see now in a mirror dimly. That's but it. But then face to face. That's it. And so, um, but it, it's the the danger is when we, we grab on to that, um, uh, that sorrow mm. in a very sentimental fashion and we hang on to it and we build a theology just around that one little facet of right. the diamond. And 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 that's the place that is is uh, unhealthy. It's mm -hmm. just it's just unhealthy, right. uh, Christ, a form of Christianity. Right. When and we, when we grieve, they can you know uh, be on us. Um, you know, where we, we our grief consumes us to the point where we it becomes part of our identity, and we and we abandon our faith. That's what happened to me uh, with my traumatic loss in two thousand one. Um, had a little little bit of faith and a major tragedy came and it mm -hmm. was my pain god you know let us down and right. i walked away from the church and you know mm -hmm. but only by the grace of god did i come back and not only come back but really receive my salvation um indeed and and that's the that's the danger and and you know whenever if you're grieving or or whatever we can we get our strength from the Lord, and when He allows us to grieve, mm -hmm. um, it's healthy to grieve, um, it and is. we should grieve. You know, if we have to say goodbye to to make it, to make our grieving process mm -hmm. complete, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and to and and the danger in our Christian circles is to move immediately to the rejoicing uh, that they're in heaven. Sure. Um, that's a, a rather mature way to look at it, you know, because we're grounded in our faith and the truth of that. But in our heart, we need to let go, and we need to say goodbye. And mm -hmm, it could mm -hmm. take some time. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. as long as we stay with the Lord, um, you know, we can we can walk through it mm -hmm, and, and mm -hmm. beyond it. Mm -hmm. and, sure. And not not to just you know suffer and forget, but to to know 
to know yeah. in our heart that we have the assurance that our loved ones are in a better place. Amen. Mm. <clears throat> Uh, just a uh, um, one other scripture here yeah. that I'd like to consider is First Corinthians four twenty, which says the kingdom of God is not in word but in power. Mm. And mm. Mm-hmm. we might be um, again led to say, well, what does this have to do with our subject matter? But it has everything to do with our subject matter because um, the kingdom of God is not in sentimental words. Now I, I'm go. not I'm not relegating the word of God to pure sentiment. But um, I'm drawn back to the you know, what Susanna brought forth about, you know, you know, you're in the receiving line at the funeral. You want to say something. You want to impart something, some hope uh, to someone. And obviously, uh, at times, just <laughs> pure foolishness <laughs> comes out um, at times. But the, ki- the, the kingdom of God is, is not about words, or I would... Uh, uh, buttress that <laughs> with, right. uh, but buttress that with. It's not about sentimental words. It's about power. It's about power, and power is not a just a a a, a sentimental thing. Kingdom dynamics are not gushy, feely, good, uh, feel good, uh, sentimental notions, but truth concerning power, authority, obedience, sacrifice, mm. and death to self. Mm. Um, not very nice um you know the the psalmist says um that the lord loves the death of his saints Mm -hmm. (laughs) ouch really (laughs) come on lord you know can't you love uh uh, petunias or something like that what do you mean the death of your saints great expression of our faith to die for him amen is that's the truth um, interestingly, the word, mm. <laughs> the word nice, nice is not, is not found, found in, in scripture, scripture anywhere, <laughs> except I will say the in the NLT, and it's not a good usage. Oh, okay. um, it's in Isaiah thirty ten, good, and it's good. talking about the false prophets who who prophesy everything's nice, everything's going to be great. Mm-hmm. You know, peace, uh, peace, really, peace when there is yeah, no peace. Yeah, exactly. Peace, That's peace, it. Peace, so, um, <clears throat> uh, and how. How fascinating is this that we live in the culture mm. that, um, with its um, situational ethic and its slippery slope of, of morality or whatever, you can't really know truth. It, I, I was compelled this week to think, you know, if you, if you can't know truth and there's no mm. such thing as truth and truth is relative, do I still have to tell the truth? Right. Uh, really? Right. Uh, what what obligation is there on me? And well, well, clearly in politics, nobody right. feels obligated right. to tell the truth. But what obligation is there put on my shoulders to tell the truth about anything anymore? Hey, you know, the officer pulls me over and says, "Did you know that you were speeding?" And I, no. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Speed. What does that mean? No. Is that everything's relative? Um, our- so. Our current uh, yeah. society, uh, you know, we want peace at all costs. Right. Mm. And cl- yes. Especially the truth. Yeah. The um, cost. The, you know, the let's truth. just, yeah, yeah, we can agree to disagree. Let's all just get along. Put on your right. mask, even though it's not scientifically, right. uh, you know, too sound. Uh, you know, we'll take the science and forget about it. Um, Indeed. And, and run and hide. And, and we don't want people to offend anyone. So. Right. Um, be everything, nice. Everything must be canceled. And, you know. Be nice to one another. And let's Everybody be nice. Now, I, you know, Whatever there's a lot of means. outrage about the cancel culture, but I, you know, if you look at some of the things they're canceling, they should be canceled. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's you know blatant, if not you know subtle racism mm-hmm. or whatever, and we're certainly not you know uh, you know proposing that division and separation like that is 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 cool, um, but you know. It's it's so difficult in our current times to even decide what's true. Right. Um, I myself am taking a pragmatic approach of just living faithfully for God and trying to mm-hmm. ignore the media, uh, you know, in terms of what mm-hmm. they're trying to sway you towards. Um, mm, sure. It's difficult. It's a diff- It's a difficult time we live in. Um, it is. But the answer to all difficulties is Christ and Him crucified. Amen. Mm-hmm. You know, I I agree and. And I don't feel that that's a cop out. Um, I think it's a, it's a, a driving force that that drives us back to the foot of the cross, which is the place that we always should be. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a that's a good place to be. And um, thank you. 
Uh, there are dangers. There are inherent dangers in what we are doing. Mm. I, I think even uh, what you just expressed. I mean, and, and I fall, I fall victim to that. It, ignoring the media, which I likewise uh, am prone to do, mm-hmm. uh, leads us to a place of not being informed. Right. And, right. and henceforth, the powers of darkness, the principalities and powers, can easily slip things in on uninformed people. Right. right? But. Um, uh, the dynamic of which media to believe has made everything so confusing and so perplexing that um, there's a high tendency to just uh, check out mm. and say, well, I, I, you know, I'm not going to uh, participate and I'm not going to listen and I'm not going to engage. Right. So, yeah, that's, yeah, again, you got to, you know, whatever I can vote on, <laughs> you know, sure. I can vote on. We can know? and we should. So, um, yeah, uh, this is a, a, a wonderful quote that, that leads us back to the overarching theme here. Mm-hmm. So we just I want to gently for a moment move away from the specific theme of, of sentimental Christianity and just consider the overarching theme of, of false doctrine mm. and, and false um, uh, opinion, so to speak, as John Wesley puts it. I love mm-hmm. this quote. It says, uh, John Wesley said, Orthodoxy or right opinion is at very at, at best a very slender part of religion. Mm. Though right tempers cannot subsist without right opinions, yet right opinions may subsist without right tempers. Mm. There may be a right opinion of God without either love or one right temper towards him. Satan is proof of this. Mm. That is so convicting. Mm. Uh, Satan knows everything in terms of knowledge about God. Mm. And I think I said last week that our impetus, our intention is not to know about God, but to know God yeah. intimately. Jesus says that in, 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 in John seventeen three. This is eternal life, to know God and Jesus Christ whom he had sent. So the impetus, uh, the, the driving force is to know God, to know him intimately in a in a in a love relationship, not just know about him. Mm. Knowledge puffs up, but only love genuinely edifies. Yeah. And Wesley draws that out here. So um, in terms, in, in, the, in, the, in the larger scheme, in the overarching scheme of um, false doctrines, uh, you know, we, we have to have charity, like yeah. um, as um, uh, uh, Augustine said, we, right. we must have charity where there is a, a dis- disagreement on, on theological themes. And, and, uh, but we have to distinguish between what is bedrock and, and, and non-negotiable and what may be uh, uh, an opinion. But in all things, uh, Augustine says, love. Sure. In, in love, all things, love. there must be love. Absolutely. Um, and our disagreement uh, must was never drive us, you know, to that place of uh, of of warfare, of dogmatically digging in our heels mm. and 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 uh, insisting upon our rightness or, or our righteousness. I think these are very dangerous places to be. We mm. should be pliable on this side of glory. Yeah. Um, so, does anybody want to add no. in closing any thoughts <clears throat> on, on that? No, I think. It's pretty- Pretty well covered today, sweetheart. All yeah. right, so when we listen to and the then, sermon and, upstairs and, today, and then let's some. have some pliable hearts and minds and, and, uh, and enjoy the presence of God, Amen. indeed, uh, and um, you know, holding the, the cross in tension, uh, yet uh, like Jesus, you know, uh, willing to rejoice. I, I will say in closing, I'll, I'll never forget the time that I first engaged or, or realized, and I, I know I've said this uh, before in our Sunday morning studies, but I'll, I'll say it for the sense of the podcast. I'll never forget the time I first uh, in, recognized the, the, the purpose of church. Mm-hmm. And here I am in, in Catholic church, I'm a little kid, and of course you have the, the missal, which is the, it gives you the daily readings and the order mm-hmm. of the mass yep. on, on any given day. And it tells you when to sit, stand, kneel, roll yes. over, play dead, etc. I'm sorry, I'm being facetious. Helpful. This is not 
appropriate. But uh, it says whenever the people, you know, speak uh, with a responsorial uh, psalm or something or prayer, it, it instructs, it says the people. Uh, whenever the, the, the cantor or the choir, it, it says that. Whenever the priest speaks in the Mass, it says in the Missal, the celebrant. Mm -hmm. And I realized, and I was just a little kid, I realized, I said to myself, oh, this is this is supposed to be a celebration, right? <laughs> right? And of course, um, you know, to a to a, a ten year old, a celebration is party hats and chocolate cake and stuff like. So I didn't really get the whole scope of what was being celebrated here. Mm -hmm. But let us go forth and celebrate. Yes, mm -hmm. celebrate the whole package. Mm -hmm. Celebrate uh, the cross mm -hmm. as Jesus did for the joy set before him. Celebrate the resurrection. Celebrate our. Uh, salvation. Yes. Otherwise, we're going to be prone to draw, be drawn into that sentimental notion, even of our own Christianity. Like I think you said in the very beginning, mm -hmm. you know, woe is me. I'm so bad. Yeah. I crucified Jesus. There's no hope for me. I'm just a mess, etc. And self pity is is a form of uh, pride, and, mm -hmm. and pride goes before destruction. Yeah. So let's celebrate. Mm -hmm. And what and our purpose re, always before us is is to glorify God and enjoy or or celebrate Him forever. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, for mm -hmm. uh, revealing these, these these truths to us. Uh, help us to um, embrace them and to uh, uh, consider our, our own hearts uh, to deviate from error which we're prone to Lord. Mm. but I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would bring uh, uh, truth um, conviction uh, leads us towards repentance and um, uh, and forgiving one another Lord God uh, as is uh, your intent for us as we uh, are changed into the likeness of your son more and more every day hallelujah Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Beautiful.